The XF Robot Head Tracker just works. It's tiny, lightweight, standalone with its own 300 milliamp hour battery and has a low battery warning beeper. And it costs just 18 GBP at the making of this video. I was hoping that its UART outputted CRSF so that we could attach an Express LRS receiver as a transmitter for wireless head tracking, but sadly it just outputs the raw binary data from the TX and RX pins. I'll make another video about that, but as a standalone device it is brilliant, and it's probably best used wired via its PPM port to the trainer port on your radio with trainer mode set to master jack. As long as your radio can accept and independently use individual channels from a PPM input like OpenTX or EdgeTX can, then this will work. The trainer cable is not included in the package. You will need your own 3.5mm TRS or TRRS audio cable. So while in this configuration it is not wireless, it's just one wire because it powers itself. A single press of the mode button shows its battery indicator via three lights. You turn it on by the mode button as well, which is the DJI way of a quick press followed by a single long press. After this, a long press of the mode button centers the head tracker. You should only need to do this once before every flight. A double press of the mode button disables it completely, which is great, but I'd rather set that up on a switch via the radio. It does other stuff, but that's for their C20T gimbal, which I will cover in another video. There is minimal setup with this, or none at all. If you don't like to tinker, the default trainer channels are 4 to 8, with yaw and pitch being on channels 5 and 6. It doesn't matter what channel any of these are on, as you can, for example, select TR5 to channel 7 on your radio. If you want to do a bit of tweaking, you will need to navigate to their webpage and under downloads get the head tracker upgrade package. All we're interested in is the cwheadtracker.exe, so open that. At the top right, change the language to English. Turn the head tracker on and then plug a USB-C cable into the head tracker and a computer. And yes, you can power the head tracker independently via the USB-C while it's in use if you want to, but do make sure that it is a 5 volt input. Select the new COM port that appears and start debug. I didn't do any kind of firmware upgrades at all, no kind of calibration or anything like that. All I did was set pitch and yaw to channels 8 and 7 for a simple servo based pan and tilt system. I reversed channel 8, which to be fair could have been done through the radio. The center column is for the gains, so if you don't want to break your net looking back or up and down, then adjust these values as you please. When you've made the changes that you need, hit upload param and then save flash and it's ready to go. So how did we end up using this? Well, my friend Andy came up from Dan Saf to fly with us. He has the motion sick head tracker that just wouldn't work. It would constantly drift or do its own thing, but motion sick is sending him a new one. We even just used a piece of Velcro on the top of his goggles and on the underneath of the head tracker, which is not my favorite mounting option, and it was fine. We used it all weekend over two days, and we didn't even need to recharge its battery. So Andy, how much was this motion sick one? Uh, about 100 quid, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and has it ever worked? Uh, very briefly. Yeah. On the bench, it's worked fine. In the air, no. And what's this one you've got on your head here? The XF Robot oh. Head Tracker. How much is that? About 18 quid. And is it any good? It works in about 20 minutes. We had it working and it has not had a problem so far. Ah, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> I can't fault it. I'll link it in the video description if you wish to buy one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.